Joining us in studio, it's the voice of uh, the Southeastern Mustangs, that being Alan Blankenship. Alan, welcome to the playbook. Welcome. I'm glad you invited me up here today. So how's the summer going? How's, uh, how's the family? How's all that? Doing well. Uh, working around summer workouts. My youngest uh, moved up to varsity this year, so he's a freshman for Coach Burkett. And uh, Coach Burkett has put him through the ringer this summer. <laughs> good. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, Coach Burkett, he's, you, you won't find a better man in high school football than him. And uh, I've had a chance to talk to him several times um, away from football. Um, and what he's doing, I mean, record wise, he's building a he's program. Building. You're he's not going to see the, the wins aren't going to be there right now because he's mm-hmm. building the numbers up and everything. But what he's doing for these kids away from the field, I think, is, is very tremendous. He, he is doing a fantastic job. He's got the kids uh, buying into his program. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, uh, the kids now are, are at the stage where they will, uh, do whatever he asks to do and not ask questions, just do it. Uh, the program this summer has really got their strength up. Uh, their uh, stamina is going to be much better than it has been in the past few years. Uh, the running program, the workout program and all, a lot of the kids have uh, got done better, their, beat their personal best in the yeah. weight room this yeah. year. Uh, that's a big plus uh, for our program over the years. We've been kind of decimated uh, with injuries, uh, not being in shape, the heat, so forth mm-hmm. like that. But this year, Coach Burkett has, has got them ready. His staff has done a good job. Uh, yesterday afternoon, their first afternoon workouts, they've been working out in the, in the mornings, and the kids did pretty well. A few tapped out here and there, but uh, overall it was much better than it had been over the past few years. The big change has been the numbers. Uh, spring training, we had 35. I thought, wow, wow. I was out of college, you know, <laughs> after the numbers we'd had the previous year. Uh, right now we're down to 28 because you have them come and go uh, at, during the workout. Some just decide that's not for them and, and uh, cut out. Uh, with school coming up, registration, you hope there's a few moving in. You never know till after school gets registered if you've got a few prospects mm-hmm. uh, to join the team. And uh, so uh, that's coming up. Uh, our coaching staff has remained the same. Uh, we did have one leave this summer, but he had never really started. He just got started teaching last year and was going to help out with the junior high, but took a job uh, within 20 minutes of its home, so I can't beat yeah. that because he was doing a lot of traveling. Uh, did shake up a few things. Uh, fired the offensive coordinator. Yeah, offensive coordinator did get fired. <laughs> uh, that's one thing Coach Burkett did. Uh, he saw the handwriting on the wall and – took offense away from himself, <laughs> which is probably a good move. <laughs> He's a lineman over the years and everything. And uh, Coach Keith Moore has taken back over the offense, and Keith uh, was the first coach at Southeastern. Yeah. And uh, been with a lot of these kids from seventh grade up. Uh, has a great offensive mind. Uh, he knows how to get through to the kids, and they will buy into his, uh, his setup. And uh, so we're looking at, uh, looking at a good year uh, coming up. The kids are excited. Uh, the coaching staff's excited. Uh, you know, our field's looking in great shape. Yeah. Uh, don't have a field house yet, but we're working on that. Uh, that's the last thing we need over there on the, uh, on the football field. Rome, was, Rome wasn't built in a day. So. That's it. That's it. Neither was Southeastern. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you travel down that way lately, they cut the uh, right away. Yeah, yeah, in front of the football that. field, you can that. you can see the field. It and looks a lot better coming down seventy five. You can see the field a lot it, more. It's it really does. pretty. Looks much bigger. Yeah, it does. It does. And uh, uh, the community really kicked in uh, two weeks ago. We had a big work day. Uh, had community in all all that week, helping out, doing things, getting everything ready, lined up uh, for our first home game, which is sixteen nights yep. from today. And uh, so everyone's getting ready for that that big game. Alan, I know you said you got a, a son that's moved up to varsity now, and, yes. and know you do the radio uh, for Southeastern. How long have you been a part of the Southeastern community and the program over there? Well, my oldest son is uh, thirty-two, uh, so twenty-eight years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, back, uh, this was one of our goals from back years ago to get a high school. Yeah. 
at, uh, at Southeastern, and uh, he ended up graduating from Locust Fork in, in 2000. And uh, uh, just a few years ago, when uh, Mr. Peoples contacted me about, hey, we're looking at a high school here, and got involved and got the booster program yeah. started and all, and just uh, my wife and I, we just believe in high school sports yeah. and high school at, at Southeastern. She works there at Southeastern. Yeah. So this had been pretty special for y'all to watch it become a high school Exactly. And now to see the football program exactly. start, and like Justin talked about, and we said this yesterday, and see Coach Burkett and the program he's building, y'all got some stability yes. there with the coaching staff. Yes. It's had to be really special for y'all to see that to come to a high school football program. Exactly. Other athletic programs doing well, I know it's really special for y'all. It is, and I, I tried instilling, talking to the kids. Uh, I went through a startup program at Penson mm -hmm. back years ago, and, and uh, we played you know, two or three years practically on the road, never yeah. at home, never at home. Uh, drug up and down the field. Uh, I said, I've been there. I've done that, you know. And it 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 took, you know, three or four years to get to be uh, to be competitive. Right. And it, and that's just part of the program. And I've tried to tell the kids, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I feel your pain, but it does get better. Right. Regions uh, they got realigned this past season. Addison, Decatur Heritage, Lynn, Meek, R. A. Hubbard. Of course, Southeastern, Summerton Christian. What do you expect from this region for Southeastern this year? Well, we did drop down from yeah. 2A to 1A. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that had to do with some of the bigger schools, realignment and so yeah. forth like that. So uh, we're back to 1A. Uh, Addison and Summerton Christian dropped with us. They were in our region the last few years. So they uh, have dropped down with us. Uh, of course, our first two games are – non-conference games but then uh we have addison addison uh coach burkett was talking the other night when we when i interviewed him they have i believe he said the 11th winningest program in the state of alabama so they have a big tradition at addison so yes, that's a do. tough 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 road it is to uh handle there summit and christian uh will score a lot of points mm-hmm the uh, main goal there is uh, not let them score two touchdowns in a quarter. Stay yeah. with them because if they ever get two, they're going to score more. And uh, that's been our problem the past couple of years, just not been able to stop them like that. Going into the, the this next year, who's some of the players, maybe some of the standouts you guys expect to get a lot from this upcoming season? Well, uh, uh, Harmon Barton has been with the program from day one. He has. Uh, Harmon is our uh, – does some of our kicking duties, mm -hmm. and he's really worked hard in the off season uh, with Coach Evans and so forth like that. And he's going to be doing uh, some of our kicking. Uh, Seth Wadsworth, uh, be a junior, he's going to be our quarterback, and he played a lot of quarterback okay. last year. Him and Brandon Jones, Brandon graduated, so uh, Seth will be the main quarterback, and a backup will be Cameron Robertson, another uh, junior. So we're we're not real heavy in seniors this year. Right. Okay. Um, Burkett, he described this past season with, with one word. Yes. <laughs> at, at immediate day. Everybody, everybody heard it was yeah. was disaster. But I'm I see, I see it feels like there's a little bit more optimism. He seems a little bit more excited about this season. Have, have you seen? I know you've talked to him. Have you seen the same thing from yes, Burkett? Yes. Yes. Much more optimistic this year. Uh, looking at the schedule, you know, there's some winnable games there. Uh, there's going to be some close games there. Uh, Decatur Heritage is a private school, and they've learned how to operate under the private mm -hmm. school setting now, and they've been a force over the past few years. Uh, we go up, and uh, Hubbard, a lot of people forget yeah. they're Cortland. Yeah, Cortland's they put a lot of players down in Tuscaloosa over the years. Yeah, they have. So uh, they have a big tradition up in that part of Lawrence County. So uh, – We've got some tough, tough games in this. Uh, in fact, Addison and Decatur Heritage are picked one and two mm -hmm. starting out. That's, and that's pretty much wow. how to go. Yeah. Uh, do you have time to stay for one more break? Sure. Awesome. We're going to take a quick break, come back. We'll, we'll talk about the other sports going on with, uh, with Southeastern basketball, um, baseball, baseball, softball, volleyball. volleyball. We'll get into all those coming up Great. next here on The Playbook, which Great. brought to you by Cadence Bank. We'll be right back. You hear episode – Number two, it's August 2nd, 77 degrees, and on Alan Allen Blankenship from the Mustang Radio Network joining us as we just got through talking some football, and now with uh, volleyball is about to kick off for Southeastern as well. Yes, volleyball, uh, Coach Lisa Walls uh, 
has done real well the past couple of years with the uh, Lady Mustang Volleyball. Uh, last two couple of years, they've made it to the playoffs, which is a big was big plus for Southeastern to get a taste of uh, playoff and getting into that uh, next round of, of competition. I'll uh, be talking with Coach Walls next week to get some uh, updates on how their program's going, how their summer training is going, and, and when their season uh, starts. So uh, we're excited. Uh, of course, a lot of gr- the numbers are really growing uh, for our lady sports at Southeastern. Going to basketball from last year, we got the opportunity to watch Southeastern play in the county tournament. Yeah. And I was trying to look up his name, so I'll ask you, but there, y'all had a fantastic young player on the boys' team, and I can't think of his name off the top Justin of my head. Bowling. Justin Bowling. Justin mm-hmm. Bowling. Yeah. But they really – I can't remember who they played. But they gave them fits, and he gave them fits. And, and the whole team really just a scrappy bunch playing yes, basketball. I know, I know the, y'all are looking forward to them having another good year. And, and your girls' program as well on yes. the rise with mm-hmm. Coach uh, – Coach April uh, Hudson, mm-hmm. uh, who went to Cleveland, graduated two right. years before me. Uh, so I know her really well. She was a bas- heck of yes, a basketball yes. player, if yes, y'all don't already know. Right. But uh, it's got to be exciting, though. And we talk, you talked about volleyball and we've talked about football. But the sports as a whole at Southeastern are just growing and yes. getting so much better. you going to playoffs, and that's got to be exciting. It is. It's a, it's a very exciting time. Uh, a lot of these kids have never been exposed to to anything like this, uh, you know, for a long time there were no, there was no rec program mm-hmm. at Southeastern at Rumlaut, so they didn't have that competition, right. so, and so they didn't know how to compete and and how to react to the crowds and and react to these teams that have been playing for years. Uh, but basketball, we've always held our own. Uh, with the rec, they did have a rec league that did quite well, and the girls did quite yeah. well. Uh, Coach Hudson does a fantastic job and has built that program uh, from the ground up and, and does a real good job. Uh, this past year, uh, Coach Hannah Chapman, Coach Chapman's wife, did the junior high girls. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she's building and working with Coach Hudson to get – to have steps, have them right. coming up in, in different levels. So uh, they, they've done a good job. And then on the boys' side, uh, Coach Keith Moore heads up the basketball program. Been there since day one with Southeastern. Uh, loves the sport of basketball and does a real good job. Uh, Justin Bowling was a smart plug. Trouble was he graduated this yeah. year. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be uh, have a lot of underclassmen this year mm-hmm. coming up that played uh, – Varsity last year will but will be taking over a lot yeah. this year. Coach uh, Dewey Lewis, junior high, mm-hmm. junior high this year went all the way in the county to the final game yep. and got beat by Hayden. Yeah, so fantastic job by by Coach Lewis and that younger bunch. Absolutely, and your baseball and softball programs uh, also had good years this yes. season as well. Yes, the past two years uh, both have gone to the uh, uh, playoffs. Uh, so that's that was a real plus for our program. Uh, the girls did quite well this year. Uh, the guys, we had to go up to Gaston again, <laughs> and uh, Gaston is a is a tough place to yeah, play. It is. Uh, their fans are unique, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, uh, I'd forgotten how bad it was <laughs> up there, but uh, you know, it took them two games. Mm-hmm. To, to beat us out, so but but had a good job, uh, coach Coach Burkett, uh, and Coach Keith Wadsworth, one of our volunteer coaches, did uh, had the varsity boys, and then Coach uh, uh, Corey Evans and one of our volunteers, Steve Mundy, had the junior high, and so we've got a lot of a lot of kids coming up in those in that program. Great. The last uh, yesterday show. It was kind of a theme with, with Twitter, and we talked about it with uh, both coaches, with uh, with Robert and with Greg, with Coach Musso, especially at Locust Fork. But I know Coach Burkett's one of those guys who uses Twitter. He yes. uses social media, and that seems to be uh, seems like it makes a big impact on the younger kids at Southeastern. It, it does. Uh, be sitting there looking at Facebook, and all of a sudden here comes something up from Coach Burkett. He's telling them, drink plenty of water. It's only 48 <laughs> hours till we hit the field. Yeah. You know, uh, get your sleep. You know, uh, it's only such and such a time. Uh, uh, giving some words of inspiration to them. 
Uh, so uh, it's taken his parents a little bit to get used to <laughs> to being contacted and getting information that way, but it, but it's good for the kids. They they plug into that and, yeah. and feel comfortable with it. Looking at the last couple of things he's posted, uh, and a lot of them are quotes. Yes. Uh, one of them is while on deck, while on the on deck circle, you should be focused on timing. Uh, that one being a baseball. I mean, he's constantly putting this stuff out there. I think it's very inspirational and mm-hmm. uh, and get the kids motivated for sure. He's yeah, he's but. done a lot this year. Put up about uh, what uh, coaches at the next level are looking for, mm-hmm. not only in players but in parents. Right. You know how what they look at, what they're uh, wanting to see, and uh, what they don't want to see. And so we've got kids uh, starting to go to the next level, getting some scholarships and so forth. Uh, uh, Maurice Zamora went down to uh, Montgomery, but now he's back at UAB, walked on at UAB. Wow. So uh, uh, that's going to be a local plus, you know, for us to right. be able to see Maurice at the next level. Now, I've talked to Coach Burkett, and this is not really sports-related at all, but I've told him, I was like, man, we have got to go hang out and go to all these eating establishments. <laughs> Because that's one thing he's always posting, and I just now noticed he shared one of Robbie McAlpine's posts of, of Wood Fire Grill. Yes, Coach Burkett loves food, and I, <laughs> are you going to be? You want to be come with us as well? Yes, most definitely. Okay. If it's food, I'm involved. I'm a good Baptist. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Alan, I've heard many people say this, and I couldn't agree more. Talking about Southeastern as it's come up over the years, it's a high school now. You got your football program going. Southeastern in the next few years is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this county in sports and is, is a growing place. Yes. I'm sure you see that. It's kind of been a unique area where it's at in between Onyana and Jefferson exactly. County. They're on 75, and, you know, we've got the, the belt line that's going to be coming through here yes. in the next several years. So I know Southeastern is just going to be such a huge place, and, and, and really you guys can already start to see that a little bit, I'm sure, and right. see – how good the programs are going to be in the years to come. That, that's it. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, have to be patient. Yeah. It, it is a process. It's not an overnight thing. You can't wave the magic wand and, and be competitive and, and all. Uh, it takes time. A few years ago, we, the coaches and the staff, made a decision, go right into varsity. Yeah. And there's, a, there's another way to do that. In fact, our last game this year, Asbury, took the other route. Right. Started out in junior high, JV. This is their first year to, mm-hmm. to have a varsity. First, they're seniors. This is their only varsity season. Wow. wow. So they took the other road. We took the other road. Yeah. So that's the way to do it. I feel like we took the right route. Mm-hmm. Uh, got thrown right in. See what it's all about. See what it's about and how to react to right. it and how to grow, grow from yeah. that situation. Yeah, that's a big thing. All right, first game coming up on the 18th against Appalachian. Uh, rivalry game. I know we're going to be uh, making a, a big appearance there as well. I think we're going to pop, probably do the show live from from uh, the, the, the uh, stadium that afternoon. And uh, we look forward to it and looking forward to another great year of Mustang football and really all sports. Well, we're looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, it's getting the community behind us. Yeah. Uh, we've got great turnout uh, at the home games. Uh, can't ask for anything better. I mean, we're filling up the home stands. Uh, a couple of games last year, the visitors brought in a good crowd, so it, it was an exciting Friday night yeah. football uh, at Southeastern. And uh, we're getting – I want, just want a chance to thank WCRL, Robbie, Justin, Adam, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, I have a lot of parents come up and say, hey, y'all, y'all going to be doing this game? You know, I got scared. I couldn't find you. Couldn't pick you up, you know. So uh, we've got a lot – like that, I got one guy, Al Tenney. He's a fireman, so he depends on us. Yeah, when he can't be That's there awesome. to to keep up with what's going on with his son and everything. So we're excited about it, and and it's it's uh, high school sports at its best. Yeah, it's southeastern. Absolutely. Absolutely, and there's a lot of great communities across this county, and southeastern is definitely yeah. one of them. We appreciate y'all very much. Thank you so much for coming on, Alan. As uh, we uh, look forward to talking to you maybe next week, and yeah, sure. uh, we'll get some reports for you on how. Yeah. 